we return, we're talking about feminism. Joining us in the studio are two women who say women of color are the backbone of the movement. That and more next on Diverse Long Island. Organizers of the second annual Women's March say the demonstration is all about standing up for equality and social justice. This year's theme is power to the polls. The focus is on registering more women to vote and electing women and progressive candidates to public office. The mission is, quote, to harness the political power of diverse women in their communities to create transformative social change. Joining me right now are two women who dedicate their lives to this mission. Shireen Rashid is a professor at LIU who teaches gender studies and multiculturalism. And Marsha McNair is a professor at Nassau Community College and the founder of Long Island Girl Talk, an organization that encourages girls of color to pursue careers in media. Welcome to Diverse Long Island. Thank you so much for being here. I wanted to start with you, Shireen. Uh, there's been so much talk about this year and last year being the year of the woman. Do you agree and why? I definitely agree because this has been the year where issues of um, feminism that have been um, affecting women, especially women of color, are at the forefront. Um, the march really was a personification of that in terms of suddenly you had no feminists from different backgrounds, different ethnicity, different races, and different issues who came together through an intersectional framework. You had, Muslim, you had a feminist Muslim, you had an LGBT activist, you had a Hispanic, you, had, you have these amazing strong women who were taking on the voices for their own communities, as opposed to, in the past, having their voices be spoken on behalf of others. And Marsha, why do you think that this Women's March is including voices that were previously marginalized? Why does this movement feel different than uh, the ones of years past? Well, it feels different because women of color, and we've always been at the forefront of the feminist movement, but now more than ever before, uh, we're getting the publicity that we deserve. For instance, Tarana Burke, a creator of the hashtag MeToo movement, uh, she's an African-American woman speaking out for all women. Um, so there are many others who have been standing up for social injustice, uh, not just in regards to people of color, but um, in regards to women. And um, some of our greatest um, icons now currently, uh, such as Michelle Obama, um, Oprah, they're all women of color. People look at women of color as role models. They're, they're strong leaders. And I think that's something that we didn't get as much publicity on in the past. And uh, can you both talk about this, the term intersectionality, and why is it so important to the concept of feminism? I think it's so important to concept of feminism because before, feminism is equated with equality. You can't have equality if you're being discriminated because of your race, because of your sexuality. And with Kimberly Crenshaw, you have something like intersectionality making a forefront, but saying that, you know what, it's not just about gender, it's about my race, it's about my sexual orientation. And if I'm being discriminated in these other aspects, my gender will also be important, but these other categories of how I define myself take center stage. And so that is why, when we talk about our issues of identity, and issue of identity as women, you cannot talk about gender without issues of gender, uh, without issues of race and sexuality. And Marcia? Um, intersectionality just talks about how these various forms of discrimination come together or they coalesce to affect a person's life and that person's destiny. Um, as you were noting, um, women of color don't only have to deal with sexism, but they also have to deal with racism. But Crenshaw also made her definition of intersectionality a lot more inclusive to talk about uh, sexual preference, uh, to talk about the way class affects a person's life, uh, to talk about the way a physical ability affects someone's life. And so I think intersectionality is um, a way for black women to finally connect with the feminist movement because their issues have always been uh, very different in nature than those of white women. Um, they've always faced discrimination, not just because of gender, uh, but because of race. 
And so in this way, intersectionality becomes more inclusive and ma it makes us feel more a part of the movement and like our needs are being recognized. And Marsha, I, I, when I use the word feminism in the black community and in wider communities of color, sometimes even in the research for the show, I've gotten pushed <laughs> back. <laughs> Why do you think there's this sort of aversion to the concept of feminism in communities of color? Well, I think the aversion comes from the fact that in the early days of the movement, it was really a white woman's movement, despite the fact that um, African American women had been instrumental in the movement for years. Um, it seemed that the first issues that the feminist movement wanted to deal with were things that uh, white women were dealing with, such as not being able to work outside of the home. Um, African American women have always worked out of sight of the home. We were working in the fields when we were brought here. And so we didn't necessarily relate to this idea of not wanting to stay home and take care of the family. Uh, we were concerned about issues that happened in the workplace. And so there was that disconnect um, very early on. And unfortunately, I don't know if people have, if the movement ever kind of like overcame that uh, sort of stigma that it had of being a movement for uh, white elitist females of a certain class. And uh, women of color are the catalysts of so many social movements. Uh, I, I would be remiss to, to say it was just Black Lives Matter or the Civil mm -hmm. Rights Movement or the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. What do you ladies think is next? Very quickly. I think what's next is going to be a movement where intersectionality in terms of who we are and who we identify ourselves is going to be at the forefront. And we'll be creating spaces which are going to be more porous, more, less uh, boundary specific, and, um, and something that we can reclaim our own narrative back um, from the dominant discourse. Great. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back.